Okay, so all the work we've been doing in this chapter so far on lists and dictionaries has really been to prepare us for this next control structure um, or iteration structure, loops. So uh, a loop is a lot like a, uh, an if statement. Uh, if statements control the flow of the program and guide it and, and make the program dynamic, letting it uh, work through different paths depending on whatever criteria are relevant. Loops are when we need to repeat the same functionality multiple times for uh, uh, a, you know, a certain number of records, a certain number of iterations, whatever that may be. So it's a, we call it another type of control structure. Anyway, what I wanna do is take our book list from 5.2. I just copied it in here, or you can pause and type it in. And let's make uh, the first of two types of lists. There's four, and, or sorry, first of two types of loops, for loops and while loops. So a for loop we often use when we have a predefined list that we want to work through or do something with. So as soon as I write the word for, you see it turns purple. That's because it's a reserved word that's understood by the Python compiler. Next, I'm going to put a uh, variable name. I can call this whatever I want. This variable is simply going to represent each of the items in the list I'm about to work through or the dictionary. So I called it book simply because book list represents books, but I can call this whatever I want and it's still going to work just fine. It's going to be used to iterate and represent each of the books in that list. So I just call it book because it's descriptive. So for book in, and notice in turns blue because that's also a necessary reserved word for a for loop. And I so I have uh, the word for, a new variable name to represent items, the word in, and then the list of the dictionary that I want to iterate or loop through uh, colon, just like I use with an if statement to end an if, an elif, or an else. Next, hit down or hit uh, enter, and notice it automatically spaces in two lines, just like the if statement does too. If I want some functionality to happen repeatedly as part of this loop for each item in that book list, that that behavior or that logic needs to be spaced in twice or four times or some set up number of times. So by default, it does two. I'll stick with that. So all I want to do each time is print book. So when I run this, that's what it does. For each item in this list, it simply prints out on a new line. So I uh, I could do more than just print, though. I could use any number of uh, string commands to um, edit the text or search for and, and clean up text. We'll come to that later, though. For now, let's show you the next type of loop, and we'll come back to some examples of both of these. So uh, for is the first loop. The uh, while is the next loop. I want you to do this. Let's create a variable, an integer called x, and let's set it equal to zero. And let's make a while loop, which also turns purple, just like our four. And we're gonna say while x, let's just do not equal to 10. So this criteria here, unlike up here, book in book list, this loop is gonna run as many times as there are items in the list. This loop is gonna run as long as this criteria right here, comparison operator, is evaluated as true. As soon as it's false, the loop will end. This loop is much more dangerous because it can become what we call an infinite loop, meaning it can never end. So as long as x is equal to zero, this loop will run infinity times or until we cut the program or end it because it's not gonna equal 10. And that's gonna be true and it's always gonna stay true unless we do what's called increment the loop. So here's what I'm gonna do. Um, oh, sorry, first end my colon. Now let's print out x, but before we're done, we're going to do one more thing. In addition to printing x, we're going to say x equals x plus 1. So one line at a time. We first set x equal to 0. We evaluate a, an oper a, condition, a comparison operator here. While x is not equal to 10, go into this loop and proceed. What's all the logic? Well, there's two lines of logic. Print out x and then add 1 to x. Take x and set it equal to itself the previous value of zero plus one. So through this whole line of code, once it's gonna print out x and turn x into one. Then it's gonna go back into the while again and reevaluate, say, is x equal to 10? Is x not equal to 10? True, it's not equal to 10. Therefore, it's gonna print it again, add another one to x. Now x is gonna equal two. And it'll keep going and it'll loop through until eventually x will equal 10 and it'll say, well, x not equals to 10. Well, it is equal to 10, so this gets evaluated as false and then it stops. I'll show you what we mean here. Enter. First time through, x is equal to zero. It prints it out. It adds one to x and proceeds back into the loop again. 
and it keeps going until that last time it turns X to 10, but it doesn't print out 10 because it, it, it becomes 10 after the print line. So it prints out nine, adds one to nine, it becomes 10, comes back up here to the while and it says, well, not equal to 10. Well, it is equal to 10, so this gets evaluated as false and it skips these two lines and proceeds with whatever's after. So for example, we could say, uh, let's come up here and say, print, whoops, whoa, easy, right here. All right, print um, uh, self-destruct in, and then let's print out the number, and let's concatenate onto that, that little dot, dot, dot. And then when it's all over, we're going to come out here and by and by deleting and going back to the to uh, position zero and typing print, this means this is going to happen after the loop is all done. So as soon as this last x gets to ten, and this is evaluated as false, it skips these two lines and proceeds with whatever it finds that's spaced back here at the first character again, and it assumes that this loop is done right there. So we're going to say right here uh, explosion. Whoops. All right, what did I miss? Let's check it. Uh, print, um, concatenate. So unsupported type for operand string. Um, what we can do is we simply have to say, let's cast this thing to a string. So it's not trying to add as if it's a number. A number plus dots, which can't be done for casting to a string. There we go. Self-destruct in zero, one, two, three, four. Right, we should probably do it the other opposite way around, right? Let's change this and make it x equals 10. And let's say, well, x not equal to zero, and then do x equals x minus one. So it's gonna start out at 10, but now it's gonna count down. We're gonna take one off of x each, each time, and that's more of a true explosion. Self-destruct in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, explosion. All right, so our two types of loops here, for and while loop. So as a reminder, the loop statement is either for or while, ends with a semi with a colon, Whatever logic you want to be performed repeatedly for every item in the list or until the comparison operator is evaluated as false has to be spaced in an, even, an equal number of times, whether it's two or four, whatever you want. And then to proceed with the flow of the logic after the loop, you move whatever code comes next back to line up with the original while loop again. Okay, so next I wanna give you a more practical example in data science of how we might use a loop. Let's say we've collected some data and uh, one of the fields we asked them for was sex. So we have, uh, but the problem, we made the mistake of instead of giving them a form field with options, male, female, or undisclosed, we gave them a text box. And so the data came back looking like this. One person entered male, somebody else entered um, female, someone else entered M, lowercase, Someone else entered female, but uh, the, cat, the first F was lowercase. Someone else entered F. Someone else entered capital F. You get the idea. The data has come in in many different formats. Now, in order for our data analyses to be useful, we need to standardize and create shared meaning across values that are meant to mean the same thing. So we need to do some data cleaning. Let me put a couple more values in there so we get all of these. I'm going to do lowercase male. I think I got it. And then we'll do an uppercase M2 to handle all these. Okay. So here's what we want to do. Let's make a for loop that cycles through. And I'm going to teach you just a couple of, we call it um, string manipulation uh, methods. We'll have a more complete list of these later on in the book when we actually learn data cleaning. But for now, what I want to do is say for um, uh, what we can do is I'm going to call this sex data and then here for sex in sex data we're going to um, let's start with an if statement let's say if and let's use um, let's see here, here's the problem how do we determine if someone's male or female that applies to all of these options so male never has the character, the letter F in it. So uh, if it's, so why don't we do this? Let's say if it contains F, then we know it's female. Um, if it contains M, it could be male 
or female, right? So we can't use M. However, what if someone, all right, we don't have any undisclosed issues right now, so we're gonna ignore that one for right now. We'll assume that we've got this for everybody. So let's do, let's do the whole F one. Let's say if, uh, okay, I'm going to uh, teach you a string function here. So sex is the variable that's gonna represent the entry here in the list. I'm gonna show you ec uh, uh, the dot find command. So this is gonna say, uh, oops, if, if sex.findf, let's see, so here's what the find returns. The find is gonna return the uh, position of where that character is found in a string. So in this first string, uh, what it'll return if it can't find it at all is a, uh, a negative one. And if it finds it, it'll return the location of where it found it. So for here, it's gonna return a zero because it's in the zero position. So again, like a list, it's a zero based uh, ordering. It'll return zero here, zero here, zero. So let's do this. Let's just say if sex.find f is less than zero. All right, so that gives us a true false because remember, and if we need a comparison operator here that results in a true false value. So if it's less than zero, that means it didn't find it, it must be male. So we're gonna say print male and we'll use the full term male to standardize on. If it doesn't, if it, uh, if it isn't less than zero, meaning it's zero or greater, then we're gonna print that means it must be female. So let's run that and see what we get. Okay, take a look. Can you explain what happened here? Why does it think the first three are all female? Well, the first, or sorry, male. The first one, yeah, clearly it's male. It didn't find F, so it's not in there. But this one, it's got F in there. So why does it think it's male? So remember, it is case sensitive. We looked only for lowercase f. Since it didn't find lowercase f, it assumed this is male. M here, assume that was male correctly, but then it found a lowercase f, lowercase f, so it made those two female, and then the rest male. So we gotta do something else. So let's use next the lower command. So here's what we do. We say lower sex. So we're going to uh, uh, first convert it to lowercase. Actually, no, we shouldn't do that there. We should do it. Um, uh, let's do it right dot lower dot find I think that might do it for us let's check oh nope uh, didn't like that so let's say actually right here sex equals lower dot oh, sorry equals sex dot lower so now we can say we've converted it to lowercase Let's see if it likes that. There we go, perfect. So we said sex equals what it was before dot lower and converts everything to lowercase. Now clearly there's also an upper uh, that'll work there too. So now let's see if it converts this one now to lowercase f, if it finds that perfect. Male, female, that's correct. Male, correct. Three females in a row, correct. Two males in a row, perfect. All right, so here's an example of a for loop with uh, an if statement inside. I know you probably feel like you still have a lot to learn about loops, and you do, but I think it'll be easier to learn those with some, uh, with some practical problems. So for now, let's call it good, and let's move on to the next section.